Field of View as a Compositional Tool Field of View is an important composition tool. A good photographer makes very conscious choices what kind of lens he or she is going to use for a particular shot. If you intend to do a photorealistic render, it makes sense to do so as well. Bryce has a very powerful rectilinear zoom lens. Its field of view can be adjusted with the FAF value in the camera control dialog. Lenses are defined by their focal length and from this value the angular extent of a scene that can be covered with it can be calculated. A lens with a focal length of 50 mm is called a normal lens and what it sees gets at the same size on the film or sensor. It is a one-to-one -one lens without distortions. Looking at a photograph made with a normal lens gives us the same impression as if we were there. Shorter focal length than 50 mm make wide-angle lenses. Things get smaller and the distance is stretched. Things seem to be farther away than they actually are. Longer focal length do the opposite. Things get larger and the distance gets compressed. Things appear to be cramped into a small space. You may have experienced this effect when you looked through binoculars. A lens is round and the angle of view is measured at its diameter. The film or sensor is rectangular and fits into this disc. Therefore, the angle of view is always in the diagonal. In Bryce, it is nearly so. The FOF value does refer to the diagonal, but only for an aspect ratio of 4 to 3 and up to 90 degrees. Now let's have a look at this. The camera is set to a FOF of 60 degrees. The aspect ratio of the document is 4 to 3 and we have an angle of view in the diagonal of 60 degrees 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 and 30 on this side makes 60. If the document aspect ratio is changed to 1 to 1 we have more than 30 degrees, we have, that's about 35 degrees, so we have 70 degrees and not 60 as it is set for the camera. Likewise, if we set the document to 2 to 1, we have a smaller angle of view, 20, 25, perhaps 26, that makes around 52 degrees angle of view, not 60 degrees. Going back to the aspect ratio of 4 to 3, we have our 60 degrees. If we set the camera off to 90 degrees, we get about 90 degrees 30, 35, 40, 45 just at the corner that makes 90 degrees if we set the camera off to 150 degrees we do not get 150 degrees this is just 65 degrees up here down there so we have only 130 degrees of actual angle of view. These are some limitations with which we live for this video. We are more interested in the impact the field of view has to the artwork. There will not be much of work done in Bryce, I'm afraid. This video is rather some sort of slideshow. The examples are already rendered, each one took a while. 
but since this is about FAF as a compositional tool, this shouldn't bother us. The first example uses some of these Parkside trains, like this one, this one, this one, and things like that. I gave the cars of this train different materials and assembled it with two engines in front and at the end of the train two passenger cars, two red box cars, two blue hole hoppers and a flat haulage. The camera is on top of the front engine though it was moved a little bit between the shots. The camera used or the lens used is a 50 mm one so what we see here is more or less how we would perceive it from this vantage point. If you were there and photograph this train with a pocket camera or a smartphone without a zoom lens you would get this 35 mm shot. Here a 24 mm wide angle lens was used and the train looks already rather long. And here the train gets even more stretched when using a very wide angle 16 mm lens. Here we are back with the normal lens and look how this train appears with a telephoto lens. A 100 mm lens is a small telephoto lens that is often used to photograph portraits of persons. The difference to the 50 mm lens is not very profound. However, if a 300 mm telephoto lens is used, the drain gets quite compressed. Using an expensive, powerful 500 mm telephoto lens compresses the train and each car very much. These examples showed that wide angle lenses stretch and telephoto lenses compress the objects imaged. The following example series uses city islands that are stacked into the distance as this isometric view shows. We will compare the difference if we move the camera nearer without changing the lens and changing the lens but keeping the camera still. The cities were made with structure synth. The lens used is a 10 mm 130 degrees extreme wide angle lens. Camera FOF is set to 150 degrees. The camera is at the reference position. The lens was changed to a 16 mm very wide angle lens. We are back with the 10 mm lens but the camera moved forward so that we get about the same shot as we had before with the 60 mm lens. The camera is back at the original position but the lens was replaced by a 24 mm wide angle lens. And now the camera was moved forward with the 10 mm lens to give about the same image as with the 24 mm lens. Here we have a 35 mm lens attached to the camera which is at its original position and we see it as if we would have photographed it with a pocket camera. And now the camera has been moved forward but with the 10 mm lens. Here we have a normal 50 mm lens attached to the camera which is at its initial position. And this is about the impression you would get if you were at the camera vantage point. Here we have moved the camera to a position so we get about the same view as with the 50 mm lens. Here we have a weak telephoto lens 
100 mm portrait lens and we move the camera to the point to get about the same impression with the wide angle lens. Now things get quite compressed and the camera has a 300 mm lens and looks far through the smoke. Moving the camera to the place we get about this view with a wide angle lens. Now using a powerful telephoto lens at 500 mm the red box can be seen sticking out of a facade. Moving the camera forward to get about the same into the frame shows that the box is between two skyscrapers. Finally we have a 2400 mm or 2.4 m telescope attached to the camera at its initial position and get an angle of view in the diagonal of one degree. The red box protrudes from the facade. And finally we move the camera with the 10 mm lens to this building and see that this box is floating between two buildings in thin air. This example series showed the compression of the telephoto lens and the stretching of the wide angle lenses and of course the role of haze if the camera looks longer through the atmosphere. The next example is less elaborate and demonstrates how the use of lenses with different focal lengths or Bryce camera foffs change the perception of size and distance. I've used the Utopia deck as the building and I also used the AH-9200 Vostok aircraft and the scene is lit by the Tourbillon Tower HRI and scene files. This shot with a 50mm lens shows the scene as a human observer would at the camera position see it. The shot with the 16mm wide angle lens makes this stock appear very long. Using a moderate 200mm telephoto lens makes it appear the AH9100 is just about to enter the dock and the second one is following closely. However, looking at the side view reveals that the nearer airplane is still about as far away from the ramp as the deck is long. The second one is still a long way off. We are looking out of the upper floor of the Sponsor Palais, a model I found on the internet and populated with nights from Dust 3D. This 60mm wide angle shot shows a lot but doesn't really look nice. The shot with the 50mm normal lens looks better even though it shows less. Now we use a 200mm telephoto lens and it brings the night at the far end nearer. If we could move nearer, as we can with the Bryce camera, we could get a nice shot of the night also with the 50mm normal lens. Going down to the basement, we can repeat this experiment. Here, with the 60mm wide angle lens, the space seems to extend very far. Using the normal 50mm lens gives us a more natural impression. Using again the 200mm telephoto lens brings in the nights at the far end. But if we could move the camera nearer and using the 50mm lens things would look much more real and natural. I have tired you with this slideshow with all the examples and comparisons, the focus were for those who strive for photorealistic renders. The lens used, or in the case of Bryce, the FAF chosen, is also important for renders that are not aimed at photorealism. It should have become obvious that a scene can be stretched or compressed at will by choosing the appropriate field of view. The final example, the cooldown, doesn't use extremes. The FAF settings were only moderately altered. 
This final render uses a FOF of 63.4 degrees, which corresponds to a weak wide-angle lens of 35 mm. With a FOF of 24.4 degrees for a 100 mm portrait lens, shows the tree spheres and their respective reflections on the floor nicely. However, the V-shaped reflections from the windows are lost. With the 84 degrees field of view of a 24 mm wide angle lens, exaggerates the blue center sphere with the girl in it and the reflections from the windows render this image to crap. This shot with the 35 mm lens is the best. Fof or the focal length of a camera can be controlled in Bryce as with a real zoom lens. And this is what the artist usually does, adjusting until it fits the purpose. This is the control. There is nothing wrong with this. The final artwork is what counts. Nevertheless, it may come in handy to know what effects Faf can have to a scene. Faf is, after all, a compositional tool that should be employed consciously. There are transcripts available for all of my newer videos. In fact, these are rather documents with pictures than just simple transcripts. They follow the topic, less the speech. Supplementary information can be found in them. On my website at www.horo.ch go to Bryce Documents Videos, Horo, scroll down until you find your video, click on transcript and here you get an example of such a video transcript. I hope this announcement will be useful to you. I hope this video could encourage you to start experimenting with FOF for setting up your compositions.